Good morning, good afternoon, my synth-waving friends. Alonzo here from Synthwave Dojo. In today's session, I'm going to show you how to approach the use of percussion in your synthwave tracks. Percussion is a, a great tool to spice up your tracks and introduce variety and color. So if you ever wanted to use percussion and didn't know how, then you're in for a real treat because you will love this masterclass. Alrighty. If you haven't done this already, I suggest you head over to synthwithdojo.com slash events page where you'll find all our upcoming events, masterclasses, live streams. There you can sign up to get email, email alerts whenever we add a new session. And you can also add any events from there to your preferred calendar of choice. Awesome. Before we start, there's a couple of other things that I wanted to mention. And as general recommendations, hey Simon, how are you? Doing great. Thank you for, for your support. Thank you for being here. So as a general recommendation, be careful not to overwhelm the music. I'm going to, sh to show you a lot of patterns, how to use cowbells, claps, shakers, tambourines, a lot of stuff. But you got to be careful not to use too much of it. Uh, in your tracks. Otherwise, the more that you hear something, uh, the more that we as humans will tune it out. So think of it as a spice, right? If you give someone, um, I don't know, like pizza for breakfast, pizza for supper, pizza for lunch, whatever, then you get tired of it really quickly, even though pizza is awesome and we all love pizza. So be careful not to overwhelm the music. Always think of the balance of uh, sparse and intense throughout the different sections of your track. Also, don't play any pattern from beginning to end. Maybe you could pull this off, but again, if you start off your track with a certain pattern, by the time that we've heard it through, I don't know, 16 or 32 bars, we're already tired of it, right? So make sure that you have different patterns on different sections, or if you have a pattern that plays from beginning to end, Make sure that you add some d delay, some reverb or something that even though it's the same pattern, it changes in the timbre or there's something that changes in it from beginning to end. Otherwise, it grows stale and boring. The next point is mix and match. Again, there are plenty of things that you can use from, from a percussive standpoint. Claps, cowbells, shakers, congas, and you can mix and match. For example, in the intro, you could have a shaker in the... In the drop, you could have a cowbell, right? So it's not like you can only use the same percussive sound or only one in your track. You can use plenty of them. Another great point is alternate between low intensity and high intensity moments in the different sections of your track. Again, if you're just starting out with the intro, building up towards somewhere, then use patterns that are sparse, meaning less notes. But as you pick up the pace, or build momentum or get to your drop, then on that section, that same percussive element that you had before can now play a busier pattern with more notes and more stuff. And always play with that contrast, right? Um, bring the level of the of the music down in terms of energy. So make your, your parts sparse or drop them out completely. And as things build up and pick up, then you can make them more dynamic and with more energy. Alrighty. Let's see what else. Be conscious of where you use the percussion as to maximize its effect. Again, pick and choose in what sections um, so we don't get tired of it too quickly. And experiment with effects like delay, flanger, reverb, and gated reverb. Today, I'm not going to touch on upon any of, uh, of the usage of effects with percussion. I'm just going to look at patterns, how to program them, and wh when, can you, when can you use this and, and that other one and how. But uh, anything that has to do with, with delay, reverb effects, gated reverb, uh, feel free to ex experiment with that on your own. Okay, finally, before we dive into the nitty gritty, for me, there are three overall approaches that you can use regarding percussion in your synthwave track. First approach is a rhythmic approach, which for me is doubling up on certain existing sounds, for example, the hi-hat and the snare, so the, the role of the percussion is to support the rhythmic elements, not draw too much attention onto itself, but provide a lift in energy. So you can double up on something else that's already ongoing. 
The second approach is what I call filling in the gaps. So if your hats are playing, let's say eighth notes, um, a filling in the gaps approach would be then playing counter to those eighth notes or in between the beats or somewhere where there is enough space for that, um, for that percussive sound to be heard. So specifically, looking for the places or the spaces where nothing is going on there uh, from a rhythmic perspective. And the third approach is what I call accents or ear candy, which sometimes you hear um, certain sounds like a clap or a cowbell. You, you could play it on the, like on the fourth beat of every snare hit and give it a lot of reverb. So it goes something like doom, ba, doom, psh. So that's kind of an accent for me. And of course, you can, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be doubling up on, on the snare. It could be something else, but you just use it sparingly, maybe like a little fill or a roll, like at the end of every eighth bar or very here and there, um, you hear it as an accent or ear candy. It's not a constant ongoing pattern. So that's the third approach. Cool. Alrighty, thank you, Intercept, Alexander, Wonder Wheel. And as we go along, make sure to type in any questions or comments that you have. I'll make sure from time to time and answer them. Um, and in any case, I always try to answer all questions. So if I don't get to them here on the live stream, I'll try to do it later. Cool. So let's get to it. We're going to start things off with a very simple drum pattern like this. So we hear 16th note hi-hat panned just a little bit to the left. Regular kick and snare drum, snare on the two and the four, which is a rock and roll backbeat. And we have the kick playing um, a mix of quarter notes and eighth notes. Nothing out of the ordinary. Simple stuff. Here it is. Cool. So let's start looking at claps. Here I'm going to show you a, a two and four pattern mimicking the snare drum. And I call this a rhythmic pattern. You see here, I, I denoted the MIDI files or my tracks with an R for rhythm or rhythmic pattern. Accent, self-explanatory. To me, this is kind of an accent pattern. And gaps means filling the gaps. Cool. So this is a two and four pattern on the claps as well, doubling up on the snare, which emphasizes the rhythm and gives it more energy. Without it, sounds cool. But then on the drop, we add this. Gives it a little bit of a lift, a little bit more of energy. And yeah, this one doesn't have any reverb or anything, and you can make it, of course, bigger more obvious with the Q. The doubling up on the snare, on the two and four. Very simple rhythm, sparse, gives energy to the track. Cool. One thing that I wanted to mention, especially for claps, cowbells, and to a certain degree, tambourines and shakers, is that you can play with the start time of, the, of each percussive hit, and you could put it exactly on the grid or you can experiment with putting it just a little bit in front of the grid so it, it's going to give uh, a more of a forward momentum um kind of um kind of feel and and i'm going to show you uh, show that to you in a second and if you place the hit just a little bit behind the beat it's going to feel like it it drags down the the beat a little bit makes it more groovy with more pocket makes it feel just a little slower than it is and I'm going to move the notes just a tiny bit. It's not too much. It's never going to sound like a flam. And I'm going to I'll tell you what that is real quick. But here, the snare and the cowbell, the clap rather, are playing exactly at the same time. Cool. Now I'm going to place the, the clap just a little bit in front of the snare. And to do this, I'm going to get rid of my great snapping. I'm going to select all the notes. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so I can see. And here's what I mean. If you move the note too much, like that, that's sloppy. It sounds like a flam, too much of an open flam. And here it's not too bad. For example, maybe here, that's terrible. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move it just a little bit until I can hear the effect just a tiny bit, 
and I'm not going to move it with my cursor because my cursor is too coarse. Um, there's a, a shortcut in my DAW Presona Studio One where I'm just going to do um, Alt and Arrow, and it's going to uh, I'm going to move the notes in tiny increments, which for me is better than than try to do it with um, with the with the uh, with the mouse pointer. So here I'm going to start moving the notes. You see, I'm just moving them by tiny increments. Let's play. I can feel the difference there. Okay, let me move it just a little bit more. Right there, I can hear it. Just a little bit in front of the snare. I could still move it a little bit more. Okay, right there, it sounds cool. Maybe I could still move it a little bit more. Right here, it still sounds good. Let me just move it a little bit more towards the downbeat. Okay, cool. Okay, the clap is hitting before the snare, so it's like it's pulling the, the beat a little bit forward. It gives it momentum and energy. So that's one approach. Now let me quantize this back and let's do the opposite. I'm going to pull it back just a little bit. Okay. There you see it's moving just a little bit. Sounds good. Let me push it just a little bit more. There you're starting to feel that clap coming just a little bit behind the snare. And it gives a feeling of more of a groove, like just a little bit slower. It's not too obvious, and these things are not a, um, a like night and day difference, but certainly they can add to the flavor of your track. And this technique, putting the, the claps or the shakers or uh, cowbells, whatever, before the beat or after the beat is very common in other forms of electronic dance music such as house, new disco, techno and all that. You'll see this also when you layer up a few snares. One snare could be right on the beat, another one just a little in front of the beat, another one just a little behind the beat. So you don't necessarily want to put all sounds exactly lining up on the beat, right? So uh, exp experiment with this, play with it and see if you see if you like it. And again, if you push things too far, we don't want a flam like that. It's a little bad. Push it further. Unless you're going for that kind of slap back effect, it wouldn't sound good. All right, so that was the claps on the two and four, and this will always work, right? This is one of those things that just as drums on the, using, having the kick on the one and three, and the snare in two and four that's a great approach you can always use claps on the two and four will work all the time so there's really nothing to um to be to focus on or to troubleshoot with that it just works okay next up let's talk about using the clap as an accent in this case Here I have the clap on the second snare hit. And of course, I could do something where I only have the clap hitting on the last snare of my four bar pattern, which would be even more of an accent with, um, with some reverb or delay. Okay. And, of course, I could have placed this accent wherever I wanted, but playing it on, like, the fourth snare hit, or, like, the last hit on the fourth bar, or on the, let's say, the second hit every two bars, that's a approach that you'll hear time and time again uh, used by many synthwave producers and electronic music producers in general. Cool. And doesn't necessarily have to align with the snare, I could just pick um, 
or choose this accent to go somewhere else where maybe it draws a little bit more of attention onto, onto itself. For example, here. Cool. And the good thing to, to do regarding accents is that here I placed this accent on the final eighth note of my, actually the sixteenth note of my first bar, and then I placed one on the, the same spot but on the fourth bar, not on the third bar. So whenever you create accents like this, they don't necessarily have to be symmetric. For example, having created the the accent there would have been symmetric because they are uh, like a bar away from each other. But I chose to do it here just to give it even more of an effect kind of uh, kind of purpose. And you can experiment with that. You can only have one hit, one of these accent hits every eight bars or four bars. Nothing says you have to have an accent every every bar. Again, these are some things that are hard to define because it's more art than science. Because if you have an accent that plays on every bar, then it uh, turns more into a uh, rhythmic pattern, not so much an accent. So, should the accent fall on just one bar every 8th or every 16th, or at the end or at the beginning? It's all up to you. You need to experiment with that, right? But make sure just to, to, to find proper ways of, of using these tools. And, um, all right. That was the clap. We've already looked at rhythm, accent. Um, here we're using a two and four pattern. Here we had the clap landing on the fourth snare drum uh, hit. Let's try to use claps as an eighth note rhythmic, rhythmic pattern. Okay, so this one, it's one of those patterns that's very rhythmic, but you have to be very careful. It's definitely groovy, and I've heard, I know that you've heard patterns like this before. The problem is that, is that, like I mentioned at the beginning, if you start out your track with this, and you let it play throughout the entire thing, 30 bars, 32 bars into the, the, the track, or maybe 24 into the track, you're already tired of hearing this, right? Unless you take it away, bring it back, or give it some delay and send it to the back with reverb and, and play with with some um, spatial effects and find ways of, of making it interesting. If you play straight through and through, it's going to be very boring. But this is a, a great choice because it's um, it has a, a good mix of energy, intensity, and also groove. Cool. And for this one as well, you can experiment with moving the notes just a little bit in terms of their starting position here and there. Or you can like it to be very robotic, like this. Which works. Alright. Let me see if there are any questions here in the chat. I see that Simon says that the quality is bad. What are you doing this quick video do, Simon? Okay, cool. Do you still hear the, the quality as being lo-fi? Not sure if it's my connection or something else. Okay, I'm gonna move on, and if it sounds too bad, then I might stream this again some other time, but that's fine. Okay, an eighth note pattern like this, be careful, it definitely brings a lot of energy, can lift up your drop or your uh, whatever climactic section um, you have in your track, but be careful with not overwhelming the listener and not starting with something like this from beginning. Uh, playing it right all the way to the end without giving some thought about it. Cool. Next up, 
let's discuss filling in the gaps with the claps like this Okay, not sure why the DAW would be lo-fi, but not my voice. In any case, I'm gonna keep going. Thank you guys for bringing that up. Maybe it's the, the samples, who knows. Alright, so here in this case, what I did is I looked for specific places um, where the snare isn't hitting, and I placed my claps in there. And as you see here, I chose a symmetric pattern. Here I have two hits, then one, two hits, and then one. So it's it's a, a symmetric pattern. Opposite of the snare. And where there's no kick as well. I think. In any case, it's it's playing a good counterpoint to the snare. And I'm panning this off to the side a little bit, I think. No, I wasn't. So right now, like this, it plays off the hi-hat. It gives it a good um, rhythmic interplay between the two elements there. Okay, this is just the pattern that I chose. I could have placed my, um, or used this filling the gaps approach in many other places. Experiment with this. Find um, a spot where it's not too intrusive, not too busy, not too sparse, too sparse and not too busy, and find a good middle ground. All right. So all this was claps, rhythmic patterns, accent patterns, filling the gaps. Now let's move on to tambourines. Tambourines, for the most part, you could do the same as with the claps. So some of these claps, tambourines, shakers, cowbells, for the most part, you can think of them just the same. However, consider that tambourines and shakers um, are better suited for 16th note patterns, for faster notes or faster subdivisions, because uh, they have a, um, a more restricted frequency range. A tambourine has less uh, frequencies than a clap, right? So they will tend to be more in the high range, similar to a hi-hat, so you can think of them as, as hi-hats as well and um, they're not going to take up so much space in your arrangement. So a tambourine in 16th notes using a, uh, a, a rhythmic approach would sound like this. So I'm simply playing 16th notes. And what I chose to do here, I've edited the velocity of the hits so we have an accent on every downbeat. So they don't sound too robotic. There's nothing bad with setting them all to the same velocity, but it gives the music a very robotic, um, drum machine-y kind of sound, but it's not bad if that's what you're going for. If you want things to breathe a little more, sound a little bit more uh, human, more real, then make sure to edit the, the velocities. And I chose to accent the downbeat. I could have chosen to um, to accent the, the upbeat, for example, like this. Let me do this again very quickly. Okay, I'm going to bring down the level of the other notes. Then just gonna duplicate. Here we go. Has a better vibe. And of course, I could have edited all these notes just a little bit so they don't all sound exactly the same, which helps with the um, with imparting a natural feel. Most DAWs nowadays have some kind of function called humanize that helps you to set certain parameters to edit notes by tiny by tiny amounts, not only the starting point, but the velocity, so make sure that you can uh, use that as well. So for example, uh, Alt-H. Okay, so my humanize function, I can edit the start note, the start range, or the velocity. I don't want to start... Well, you know what? Yeah, let me add 
let me edit the starting position of the notes just a little bit and also the velocity ranges so i'm gonna go then go from where they are like minus two percent two plus three percent and check how the velocities here are going to change and possibly if i'm zooming well i don't know if you're going to notice how the notes the notes change in terms of starting position but let's do this okay you saw all the notes changed a little bit and a, a good thing to do a good approach working with a humanized function such as this is don't go for a lot of change in one pass what you can do is just do one pass like i showed you here we reassess maybe we can do another pass of just tiny uh, changes okay cool i like it there instead of going for for one big change so experiment with that the human eyes function um possibly groove how it's called in your daw just be careful that this is not necessarily applying swing applying swing is a completely different thing it's turning straight eighth notes into kind of a triplet feel or a shuffle feel. So this is not applying swing. This is applying groove and editing the, the starting position of the notes and the velocity. Okay, so uh, make sure to find in your DAW how to how to do this. And, and again, it's not applying swing like you do in certain DAWs where you get a groove from a from MPC, whatever, and apply 66% um, swing. It's not the same thing. So it's similar, but not the same thing. Cool. And in this case, this 16th note pattern is doubling what the hi-hat is doing on the left side of our speakers or headphones. Since I panned the tambourines, I think, uh, a little bit to the right. Yeah, here it's panned to the right. So they're both playing off of each other. This works well. All right. That was tambourine in 16th notes rhythmic pattern. Now, let's uh, here filling in the gaps. We take a sip of water. All right. I'm going to, before I do this, I'm going to play with the, or unmute the bass and the arps that I have here. Let me know if it still sounds low fire filtered. All right, tambourine filling the gaps. Let's take a listen. Cool. All right. <laughs> so here, again, I found a few places opposite the snare and left enough space so they can be felt as filling the gaps. And it's a, an asymmetric pattern because we have two hits here with a certain spacing, two hits here with a certain spacing, but then on the last bar, two hits really close together. So this is cool, just to give some variety to your pattern so they don't always sound symmetric. Play with symmetry and asymmetry. Always do that. Contrast, section to section. Low energy to high energy. Leaving a lot of space, filling up all the space. Giving something expected, then breaking the expectation. Cool. So that was tambourine filling the gaps. And again, you could use this pattern and um, use claps or shakers or whatever. Most of them are very similar when you're filling the gaps and when you're um, playing accents. Awesome. Now let's discuss the shaker. And here we have a shaker playing 16th notes as a rhythmic pattern. And up to the side, maybe. Yeah, just a little bit. Like um, playing counterbalance to the hi hat on the left hand side. Oh, and I'm going to show you here something very cool. I didn't use any kind of human eyes here or accent, or I did actually. So there's an accent on every downbeat. But let me do this.
no, not quantize. Let me edit the velocity. I'm going to set them all to 80%. And a very cool trick that you can do to give uh, 16th note patterns like this, even in your hi-hats, shakers, um, kabasa, or tambourines, is... Let me go to my channel here in the mixer. I'm going to fire up kickstart. If I use it as a sidechain compressor or give that effect on the downbeats, now you can hear that instead of doing it now goes it's giving those accents to the music without me having to program them um, uh, using velocity or using a humanized function. That, so that's a really quick way of making the first notes um, softer and then ramp up louder towards the offbeat. Let's take a listen again. No kickstart or no sidechain compression. Robotic. With the kickstart or sidechain or LFO tool. Instant accents. Cool. And also, if I have an inverted wave, which I think I do here, I can give the, an accent to the downbeat notes as opposed to the offbeat notes with the regular side chain uh, curve. Here it's obviously too strong that it's leaving out these two notes. But here it's just fine. So these are quick and dirty ways of changing the, the groove and the accents of continuous 16th note patterns without uh, much effort and without much heartache and heartbreak. Cool. So that was the 16th notes shaker rhythmic pattern. And like I've been saying all along, I feel like a parrot now. Experiment with filling the gaps and experiment with accents. Shakers will work very well for that too. All right, let's tackle Cowbell. Cowbell has a couple of uh, things that you need to watch out for. Oh, thank you, Matt. Thank you very much, Atarian. Wonder Wheel Intercept. Atarian, I really like one of the tracks that you recently posted. Very much. Uh, very cool work. Congratulations on that. So the thing with the Cowbell is that it has more tone or more of a specific pitch than any of the other percussive elements that we've used up to this point. So you got to be careful with a with a cowbell and most likely tune it to the key of your track or to the scale of your track. Otherwise, it may throw off the other uh, melodic and harmonic elements if it has a weird tone to it. For example, a tone that's not off key. Let's say that your track is in A minor. And if the, the pitch or the main pitch of your cowbell is in A-sharp, then you don't know why, but your, your drum pattern is going to sound cool on its own with the cowbell. But once you bring the other stuff in, it just doesn't sound so good anymore. Something Something's going on there. You can't really put your finger on it. And it could be, or it has to be, that you need to tune your cowbell. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. So, cowbell, cowbell. And also, we always need more cowbell. Here I'm just taking a rhythmic 2 and 4 approach, doubling up on the snare hits. Easy peasy. And again, experiment with the starting position in front of the beat, behind the beat. It's up to you how you want it to feel. Easy peasy. Let me show you how to tune the cowbell. So I'm going to go here. To my cowbell channel I already have a an EQ set up for this and what you need is any kind of EQ with a spectrogram is it is that how it's called in any case you just need to be able to tell what the fundamental frequency is and for example here I'm gonna set a note 
here in Fab Filter, I see that it's the note is A sharp four. Okay, and if I look down at the bottom of the plugin, I see here on this keyboard that it's saying that the pitch corresponds to well, this A sharp four note. And this is a problem because if my track is in C major or A minor, which is two sides of the same coin, I may not notice it here depending on how active the cowbell pattern is and how prominent it is in the arrangement and track, but let's fix it. So the way to do it is we know that the fundamental of this cowbell is in A sharp four. Okay, a great approach that will always work is set the cowbell to the tonic of your key or to the dominant. So the first or the fifth degree. In this case, if my track is in C, then that's going to be either C or G as the dominant, or if it were A minor, then A or E. Cool. Now, in this case, I think it's more minor than major. It sounds minor to me. So, and here's a, another important thing. This cowbell, the, found, the fundamental is A sharp four. You gotta be careful and bring the fundamental down or up to whatever is closest, either the, fundam, uh, the tonic or the fifth, the, the dominant, uh, whichever one is closest. Because if you take a cowbell, and I'm gonna tune this, do, 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 do. Give me a second. Okay, let me set this here. Most percussive elements, if you push them up or down in terms of semitones too much, they're gonna lose their original sound, their character, and it's not gonna sound like a cowbell anymore. So for example, this cowbell, this is battery four, which uh this is the drum machine or drum player drum plugin that, that I use in my productions. It has a lot of features that I uh, that I love, very easy to use. If I tune it too low, let's say six semitones, sounds horrible. And if I tune it too high, six or five semitones, which you can see here, this one's not bad, but then it sounds more like a um, like a go-go bell. It's not anymore a cowbell. So the strategy is we're going to um, raise or lower the pitch of our cowbell in our uh, drum plugin, drum machine plugin, but try to find the closest uh, target depending on the, the, the key or the scale of our track. Again, our track is an A minor, so either A or E would work, but since our uh, the fundamental of the cowbell is in A sharp 4, then it's just easier to lower from A sharp 4 to A than to raise what uh, four semitones or whatever to E. So that's going to be a great approach just to move it down to uh, just one semitone and get it to A. And you can see here now, if I move this EQ node, you saw that it moved where the fundamental was, and now it's directly at A4. Okay, so this is how you tune your cowbell. And it's a great exercise or a great practice. Depending on your production, It uh, if you don't do that, it may throw off the sound. It may sound out of key, out of tune. Maybe not. Depends on a few factors, but definitely always tune it just to make sure you're on the safe side here. All right. So that was Cowbell on the 2 and 4. Now let's play the Cowbell on every quarter note. Still a rhythmic pattern, but a little one, a little bit more active. Cool. In a pattern like this, you could pan it to the center, a little bit off to the side to get it away from some other percussive elements. And just find the place where it makes the, the most sense in your production. But do experiment. Don't be afraid to pan some of these percussive elements to the sides. Because if you have everything right down the center with the kick, with the snare, with the vocals, or with your main uh, lead or main synth, 
then you're gonna um, overwhelm your arrangement or, or it's gonna lack a little bit of clarity so find those places and spaces to put your percussion in definitely sounds cool now something like this this constant quarter note pattern would be really cool for like the drop or more of a of an energetic section maybe you can go your intro and your build up without the cowbell but when the drop kicks in three four definitely gives it a lift cool Awesome. That was the cowbell using a chord note rhythmic pattern. All right. Let's use the cowbell to fill in the gaps. And while I take a sip of water, let me check the chat. Wonder Wheel. Yeah, there's a whole debate on whether you should tune your drums, yay or nay. Um, and I haven't found a a compelling reason not to or to always do it. I think cowbells for me, the best thing you can do is always tune them. There are certain styles of electronic music, maybe techno, maybe house, where you really want a strong kick with a lot of bass frequencies and you don't want that sub bass to clash with the frequencies of your bass because part of the sound is a super strong foundation and i've seen discussions of people saying yeah you have to tune your kick in that case and others say no don't tune your kick because you're going to destroy the music um in the case of synthwave for the most part i think you don't need to tune your kick you don't need to necessarily tune your snare or anything else except the, the cowbell um so again it's all up to you if you like the the sound of tuning your kicks and snares then the more power to you but at least in synthwave i feel it's not that important or it's not mandatory the only exception being the cowbell be careful with the cowbell and always err on the side of tuning the cowbell versus not doing it the same with go-go -go bells and maybe congas that, that have more of a pitch element or a pitch characteristic to them those let's make sure we we tune them all right so, cowbell filling in the gaps. I think by now, you know the drill. Just a quick and dirty pattern filling in the gaps. Just to spice things up a little bit and play counterpoint or counter voice to other rhythmic elements and melodic elements in the track. Sounds pretty cool. All right. Great, nothing more to say about this one. Okay, we talked about the humanized functions. We talked about editing the start times. And if I didn't mention it with the, with the cowbells, of course you can nudge the start or ending time the starting position rather not the ending time of our elements to push them or pull them cool that's a little bit in front of the beat a little sloppy there let's pull them back a little bit Cool. Back to where they were. Now let's put them behind the beat a little bit. Uh, it's a little sloppy there. For example, here. Ah, too sloppy. Just a little bit more towards the downbeat. Cool. Nice. Easy peasy. More cowbell. We always need more cowbell. And finally, let's take a look at congas. There are plenty other percussive sounds that I haven't shown here. 
And I forgot to mention this, but all the drum sounds that I'm using and the percussion samples are from the Synthwave Dojo 80s Drum Machine sample pack, which you can get for free at synthwavedojo.com slash downloads. All of these sounds are from there. Uh, I don't remember what machine I used for, for the percussive sounds, but in any case, the point that I was trying to make is that there are plenty of other um, percussion instruments or voices beyond claps, tambourines, shakers, and but most of them, they will fall into the general area or arena of some of these that we've already discussed. For example, kabasa. I didn't cover kabasa, but kabasa is very similar. Let me see if I can... Uh... It's very much like a another kind of shaker. You can use it exactly like I showed you. You see, kabasa and shaker are very... Um, very similar. Tambourine, cowbells, high or low. For example, if I were to use this ca cowbell, the high or low, I would have to tune it, otherwise it would sound weird. Congas, for example. So these are the Lin 9000 um, drum samples. What about the Yamaha RX-5? Here you see a gogo -go bells, similar approach to cowbells. Bongos, similar approach to congas, which we'll tackle in a, in a couple of uh, seconds. Castanet, you could think of this as a clap of sorts. Uh, cuica, that's a very specific kind of sound in Brazilian music. Some other stuff like this, which is random percussive element. Again, think of it as a clap. Timbales, you could think of it uh, as a conga of sorts. So all the percussive elements or voices that I didn't cover you can certainly find something similar that I did cover here. Roland R8. Let's see if there's anything new. Go Go Bells. Kabasa, same as Shaker. Clave um, could be very close to a clap. Guiro. Be careful with the timing of the Guiro so it doesn't throw off the, the track. This one you would certainly have to make sure that it, it aligns with the downbeats or aligns with the, aligns with the tempo. Woodblock is very similar to the clave, which could be used as a sort of clap. And finally, before we get to the congas, let's see. Emu drumulator, percussion, go go bells, pretty much the same stuff. Kabasa claps, clave, congas, slaps, timbales, woodblocks, claves, all very similar. All right. Let's discuss congas. Congas for me are are very cool. Definitely, they give off a an ethnic and certainly a Latin music vibe. So be be very careful if that's not what you're going for, or certainly experiment with that kind of flavor in your music. Now, the thing with the congas is that, as opposed to all the other elements that I've shown you so far. It's not as easy just to program a conga 16th note pattern and be on with it because you have to follow uh, certain sounds for it to sound sound good or at least uh, real. So let me give me just a second here. I want to show you something. I went online and googled conga patterns and one of the great things is to learn how to read music notation and a lot of people shy away from music theory and music notation oh man I, I don't need that it's too complicated it can be complicated if you want to get to a Mozart or Bach level yeah you're gonna spend years down the rabbit hole of reading music and uh, learning music theory but with a few tools and just with a little uh, you can get so far in your musical life, like it's not even funny. For example, if you don't know how to program uh, or, or what a conga pattern looks like because you're not a drummer, even I'm a drummer, but I'm not a conga player, the easiest thing you can do is go here to Google, type in conga patterns, and just look up a conga pattern, and then you say, oh man, but I don't know how to read music notation. Oh, yeah, 
but if you did you could go up and use um go online you um, and find any conga pattern or any kind of i don't know polka waltz or reggae pattern look it up and use it in your music like that right so um learn a little bit of music theory learn a little bit of music notation how to read music this is not um, hard at all i may i may make a master class or live stream about this again these are these are all 16th notes um eighth notes quarter notes super simple but rant over i just went online and looked up a couple of conga patterns so i came here to my daw and just mimicked that because otherwise it's not going to sound realistic or convincing which is what i wanted to go for and in congas you have a couple of moves or sounds like the the heel the toe palm open slap this and that so it's not just like having one drum doing this that's too robotic and too um uh it sounds too much of a like a drum machine in any case i went online looked up this pattern worked up just a little bit of the velocities and in eighth notes this rhythmic conga pattern comprised of three sounds conga slap conga high conga low sounds like this Pretty cool, pretty convincing, and all in or after a quick Google search, an experiment with it for a few minutes. Here we have our conga pattern. Sounds pretty cool. Again, this is a very distinct flavor that may not go with with your music, with all of your tracks. Maybe on one, maybe you have a, a breakdown or a break in a certain track where you want something like an ethnic feel or like a tribal drums or whatever then you could use something like that even if the if it's just for that one section right or go crazy and do something synthwave new disco where you have uh claps and shakers and all this stuff going on from beginning to end in any case it's cool and it's the uh, you have that choice and finally congas 16th notes the same deal but instead of eighths so i doubled up the speed of this pattern Pretty cool. Groovy. Let's hear it with a bass. <laughs> it may not be your cup of tea, but again, super cool when, when you need it. There you have it. <laughs> cool. Now, as we get to the end of this masterclass slash live stream, what I wanted to show you is that we can mix and match some of these patterns throughout our track and create very thick and groovy arrangements. Again, it's not like you have to decide I'm going to use only the clap versus the cowbell versus something else. On different sections of your track, you could have a shaker here, the clap there, Picking up the pace, then with the congas, then the cowbell. Um, it's all up to you how, how you can make this work within the context of your music. So let's do some very quick and dirty mix and match. Of course, uh, some of the levels of the channels are not appropriate, and I've panned some stuff here and there, right? So maybe when I enable two sounds, they're going to be right in the same uh, panning position as another. So let's not worry about that. Let's just hear it all in context to see how this could feel in a in a track so let's just experiment with drums on their own that's the clap doubling the snare in the two and four with the tambourine now contrast clap on the two and four tambourine 16th notes so if i want to enable a, a cowbell i could go with cowbell filling the gaps or on every quarter note and hear how it lifts the energy of the music two three four nice let's fire off the congas
Maybe with the tambourines playing 16th notes it's too much. So tambourine filling the gaps. Cool. <laughs> this is super groovy. You may have never heard simply like this. Maybe you will after some of you guys watching this experiment in your tracks. Who knows? If you use any of these techniques, let me know. Cool. Let's see what else. Let's break it down, build it back up again. Clap playing accents. Tambourine, 16th notes. Cowbell, 2 and 4. Congas, 8th note patterns, just so, so it doesn't feel as fast as 16th notes at the same tempo. Pay attention to how the music feels at this given tempo. If the conga patterns plays 8th, it sounds more relaxed, groovy. Now with the 16th pattern. I didn't speed up the track. It's still the same tempo, but now it feels more lively, with more movement, more energy, more momentum. So that's one of the things you need to make sure to experiment in your tracks, is that at a certain tempo, for example, a, a tempo such as 110 BPM, if you use slow subdivisions, such as eighths and fourths, the music is going to feel a little slower. And conversely, if you use faster uh, subdivisions, such as 16th notes, 32nd uh, notes, which would be too fast maybe in this concept, uh, context, but certainly 16th notes, then the music at a given tempo is going to feel faster than using the same pattern in eighth notes or quarter notes. So again, at the same tempo, you can make the music sound differently depending on, on how you program your patterns. And it's always a kind of a, of a balance because if all your patterns are in 16th notes, it could be overwhelming. So you certainly need certain elements playing a mix of quarter notes, eighth notes, and 16th notes, right? But you can pick and choose which they are because if everything is quarter notes or everything is 16th notes, uh, it's going to be a little overwhelming or underwhelming. So always be thinking about that, right? And, ex and experiment with um, how patterns can make you feel busy patterns, sparse patterns. And you can play with uh, all the uh, these ends of the spectrum in, in a any place in between, right? It's not like all shaker patterns have to be 16th notes, etc. All right. Let's see, my friends, if there's anything else that I wanted to cover with you today. We covered overall, and as a summary, rhythmic patterns, filling the gaps approach in the accents or ear candy approach. Let me see if there are any questions here in the chat before I wrap things up and let you guys go. Did you ever try to incorporate some hand pans? Instantly gives an oriental color for instant Bollywood simply. For sure, like, like I said, there are like so many kinds of percussive instruments out there. These are just like a handful. And these are like the ones that you will typically find in in um in electro uh, in classic drum boxes such as the 909s the rolands are r8 and the 707s and that kind of thing but if you get yourself um like ethnic music libraries for contact or for some other samplers there's like so many other kinds of percussive elements that certainly give you an even more flavor um, beyond kind of the, the, the Latin flavor, which is what I've showed you today. Eastern, Asian, African, a whole world of drums out there. And just like I showed you with the conga patterns, you could go online and search West African drum patterns for conga. And you look them up and use them in your music like that, if you know how to read just a little bit of music notation, which is kind of like The Matrix, where on the, on the first movie where Neo says he got hooked up and tank or dozer uh, uploaded a kung fu program and he's like oh man i know kung fu now some of this can be like that if you have just those a uh, little bit of music theory and music reading skills um, the same with drum fills if you don't know how to create drum fills 
there are tons and tons of books on drum fills, drum patterns, a lot of this stuff, which uh, being able to read that, you just need a, a couple of months of, of experience finding, uh, following a course. In any, in any case, there's like this huge world out there of things you can unlock uh, for your music and for your productions if you just learn a little bit of music theory and a little bit of music notation and how to read music. Cool. All right. What software? This is uh, Presona Studio One version 6. I've tried Ableton Live, I've tried, Re uh, tried Reason Studios, a bunch of them. Um, I wouldn't say Presona Studio One is the best, I think, to a certain degree. Live, Logic, Reason, even Cakewalk, that's free. 80, 20, they all have the same features, they just call them differently. For me, Live just had a, a few annoyances that I just couldn't <laughs> keep up any longer, or uh, couldn't deal with any longer, so I switched to Studio One a few, a few years ago. But in any case, I, I love it. And um, in case you're wondering, if you have any of the top six or seven DAWs, you can make the music that, that you want, really. It's, it's no, there's no restrictions or no limits or boundaries there. All right. So in closing, let's see. Definitely experiment with all the techniques that I showed you today. Watch the replay, take notes, um, figure out how to program these patterns in your DAW save some of these patterns as MIDI files. I think I will create a library of free MIDI files, uh, MIDI percussive patterns. I think I'll, I'll do that and upload that to simplifdojo.com slash downloads. So you don't have to go through the, the pain of doing this. Actually, you should just to, uh, for you to figure out and, and, and create and develop that, um, those skills on your own. But in any case, I'm going to do that in some way I'll, some way, shape, or form, I'll let you know when, when I have this ready. But experiment on your own, figure out how to program all these patterns, how to humanize, how to edit the velocity, how to move the pattern, just uh, the note a little bit behind or in front of the beat. And experiment with looking for ways to, in, to include these sounds in your synthwave tracks. Okay, so maybe you, you do this as, as a practice and not as for your real tracks. If you figure out this, this is not a kind of sound that you want to go for, that's cool. But always try to um, uh, look for ways to, to push the envelope, get out of your comfort zone, and use different kinds of sounds. Again, in a in a break somewhere where you want really something different, like a change of, of palette, right? Um, you could do something super drum groovy like this, which would throw everyone off, but in a very cool way. Experiment with that. Figure out how to, how to uh, develop the skills of programming all of this and getting a feel for how different percussive elements work, like cowbells, claps, shakers kabasa and, and the whole thing make sure to visit synthwavedojo.com slash events to find out all of our future master classes group learning experiences live streams such as this in and outside of youtube because that's important on youtube you can find the upcoming live streams on the the, the home page of my channel but very soon i'm going to start having um off youtube sessions with small groups of people make sure to visit synthwavedojo.com slash events for that and as always I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, if you have suggestions for tutorials such as this or completely different, just let me know. I'm always replying to every comment and question that I get. Um, and right now I have a, a bunch of ideas that I want to live stream and um, to show you just like this. And if you can not prioritize that for me or tell me what's important, I'll make sure to, to push those to the front of the line. In any case, Thank you very, very much, guys, for joining. I hope you had a blast. I certainly did. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a great Saturday, my friend.